Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here. Basically, a couple of weeks ago, I had a company called AnyPro get a hold of me. They make a car booster pack, and they had seen a previous video that I had done, and they said, you know, we'd like you to do a review on ours. And I said, well, I only do honest reviews. And they're like, okay, good, send it. So, they sent me one. Um, at the time of this review, these were $100 on Amazon. And I actually have to say I'm rather impressed with the unit. So it comes in its own case, and it's a really solid case. It looks as if it's cloth, but it's actually not. It's hard um, plastic on the inside with a good set of zippers on the outside that are nice and rugged. When you open it up, um, it's a 15,000 milliamp battery pack, which basically is about the equivalent of 600 cranking amp. And if we pull up their stats on their channel, they're claiming that it will do a 5 liter gas engine and a 3.5 liter diesel equivalent. Um, that's going to work out pretty good for us, considering the fact that I have a 2.3 liter, I have a 3.6 liter available, and I also have a 4 liter Jeep. So if it cranks over the Ford Ranger really well, I'm going to immediately jump to cranking over the Jeep Cherokee with a 4.0 and see how that goes. Now, their claim is a 5 liter gas, which means that it's not rated for cranking over my plow truck, which is a 5.7 liter. We'll see how it does on the 4.0. Maybe we'll try the plow truck just because. All right, so we've got this open. Up in the top, we got instructions. And we've got this weird cable thing. Now, this weird cable thing actually goes to this series of laptop junctions. Some of these I know, some of these I don't. This is the older style Lenovo. The older style Dell, some of the Toshiba thin pads, not sure what this one is, not sure what that one is. That one's the old Asus series, no clue what that one is, and this one is the old school Toshiba series. Now if you notice there's a key word there, old. None of the newer Lenovo's use this. The Dells have since converted over, and these ones here, I don't think I've ever seen come through my computer shop in a long time, have no clue what that was ever supposed to go to, and I don't think I've seen a Toshiba using this one in probably five years. So not sure what that's all about, but still, it's a good try. On a side note, they do make converters from this to the newer Lenovo's, um, they're about eight or nine bucks on Amazon. So just a side note. The other thing it includes is a nice USB cable that plugs into micro USB for charging up a phone, which we'll show later. Really nice set of cables, decent gauge wire. Now, the interesting thing about this is it actually advertises what they call M-Mode. Now, the M-Mode, they say, is designed for a vehicle with an entirely dead battery or a non-existent battery in the advertisement for this. So, we'll see how that works. Wall outlet charger. Always nice. Car charger definitely good. So right there we've got both in-house and in vehicle. That's really nice to see in a unit of this price. And then we've got the actual booster pack itself which is quite hefty. Um, the one thing I'd like to note about this booster pack that I noticed about it and other ones is it's actually got a vent in the back. It's not actually watertight. It's made out of some really weird rubber feeling plastic on the outside. 
And when you punch it, as always, if you can see that in video, it shows the fact it's fully charged. Now, this, like the last one that I reviewed, says light, strobe, and SOS. Let's see if it'll actually do what it says it will. So if we hold this down, we've got light, punch it again, we've got strobe, and if we punch it one more time, this one doesn't lie, we've actually got SOS in amber. So I find that really nice, the fact that it actually works. Now, the thing about this is that they advertise that theirs is better than regular Chinese knockoffs. That's nice, except for I actually have a Chinese knockoff that I have wired up in order to run this. I did a video on this shirt earlier, and the wire quality is literally the exact same. Now, if I take this, and I hook it up. The nice thing is this is three times the cranking amp of the one that I reviewed before, which means this, which ran for two hours before, would now run for six plus hours in emergency situations. That's pretty cool, just in itself. But the fact that the Chinese plug for the cheap stuff and this are both the same exact gauge wire, the same exact connection, is what it is. The other thing that I will note is that on the front of this, it actually states 5 volt and 19 volt for when you're charging something. But when you go to plug something in, in this case, I'll plug it in here, and I've got my phone getting notifications from my Facebook page, Redneck Computer Geek on Facebook. So I plug it in and nothing happens. That surprised me until what I discovered was that if you read directions, go figure reading directions, and you punch the power button, all of a sudden the phone lights up, the charging lights up, and this now indicates 5 volts. On their website, they say that this unit will charge up in an emergency a phone at least 8 times of this type of phone. I've actually pre-charged mine over the last week, I've actually carried this around with me and I've recharged my phone over the last week several times. Um, I'm now up to recharging my phone four times and I have no doubt that this unit would have recharged in another couple without any issue. I've charged this fully for doing today's review, but at the time that this was on its fourth recharge, about to do its fifth, this had only dropped down to 75%. So I have no doubt that this definitely would have continued charging it multiple times over. So as far as physical review and everything, I'm really impressed with the unit, but we're going to see what it really does. The other thing I'd like to point out about this as a very positive towards any pro, everything actually fits back in the case. That doesn't normally happen when you buy stuff like this. But this drops into its own segregated little area. This drops into here. That goes back up top. This goes in. And this goes in. And directions. And the whole thing, no matter how much I've mangled it, actually fits back into the case. You don't see that very often with many things. Normally they're packed so bloody tight from manufacturer that they never go back in. Good job, AnyPro. I really like that. So, 
Let's get outside. We're going to kick up the Ford Ranger, which has a 2.3 liter in it. Then from there, we're going to jump up to the Jeep if it works on that. Hey guys, as you can see, my dad took the positive off. Red's connected to the positive wires. Black's connected to negative. We're going to put this in. Make sure you put make sure you hit power button then M mode a green light a green light let's see if we can't start it out uh... yeah I got nothing green lights power and then try not to have your head in the way oh there we go and Okay, let's in. try for a third one. Got it. Yep, still on? Yep. I'm impressed. Yeah. So... Dad, it's at five. So, at this point... Um, we've started it three or four times. It actually seems to be going really well. I'm rather impressed with the product so far on my 2.3 liter Ford Ranger. Um, a little disappointed that it already managed to drop down to 75%, but we were using what the manufacturer calls M mode. By the way, we discovered in the directions that come with the unit, it does not tell you how to use the M mode which is for entirely dead battery. What we actually discovered was, Donovan, if you'll hand me it, here on the back of this it actually has di the directions for M mode. If you can see that. Now if I had had just the regular Chinese connections, I would have been able to just crank it over. Instead, Donovan had to mess around with the power and the M mode, but it worked. It seems to kick over quite nicely. Um, there is kind of a smell coming off the unit, but I think that's just because it's its first time being used. That might explain why it is it has air holes in the back. It probably heats up a little bit doing hey this guys, stuff. guys, as you can see, it's hooked up to the Jeep. It's a 4.0 liter. And I'm going to follow all the steps and see if it runs. Okay, Dad. Whoa. I just saw a gigantic spark. moment. Let's try that again. Yeah. All right, guys. So the learning experience that we had here was that on this power piece here, you have to punch the power and then you actually have to hold down on the M mode button and it'll turn a green underneath the icon that says in action. And at that point, it'll kick over. The other thing that we learned was that on these pliers, the power lead comes into one side and it's clipped across to the other by connection. So the side that the battery comes into actually is the one that connects your positive connection the most. What happened on the first try was that it was just this side that was connected and not the wire side and it made a bunch of sparks. There's no heat to the wires. It actually went just fine. The power pack has no heat coming out of it. I'm really impressed. We're gonna up the ante and we're at full charge and try a bigger engine. Now as we start into this next part of the test I'd like to point out that this is Big Baby, my plow truck. 
and it's actually a 5.8 liter 351 Windsor which is ginormous compared to what this battery pack is rated for for starting from cold now big baby's actually been sitting consistently now for almost a month and a half unstarted and I run an 850 cranking amp battery in this so if this product kicks this over we definitely have gone way past what it was rated for so keep that in mind Donovan this is gonna be entertaining if it starts go that way okay. so we got our negative lead on making sure to place wire side of the clips onto it and we got our positive lead on making sure yet again place wire side of the clips onto it power button lights up the indicator which is blue we hold down the M mode one two three that lights up let's see what big baby does Now the interesting note there is that Big Baby would not stay running consistently. I actually had to floor the throttle to get it to kick over. And this thing is producing a bit of heat, nothing unreasonable. And actually it still says it's fully charged so we probably could kick it over again. But this wiring harness is definitely warm from attempting that. But yet again. That's a 5.8 liter engine. This is only rated for 5.0. Just for a comparison aspect, I'm going to kick over Big Baby on its regular battery just so you can hear the difference. guys I'm really impressed with this product I don't normally do product reviews that are given to me so I'd like to say that this product does exactly what it is that it said that it would do and more I'm actually very impressed and I would really honestly recommend this to anybody um, this has been a really positive experience and I hope you guys give these guys some support They've got five-star reviews on Amazon, and I totally understand why at this point. Thanks, guys, and stay tuned for more videos.